everyone. I was doing some research recently um, on aging and uh, doing a lot, watching a lot of videos, um, getting different opinions and different perspectives. You know, it's quite interesting. The whole medical wor world is in like a debate regarding aging. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the products you you buy today is all about anti-aging. And uh, I was watching something interesting and they were saying that um, aging is, is a disease. Now I know that this is debatable, but um, I want to, from, a, you know, from, from scripturally, I would like to approach that and, and borrow this, um, for this for this video. I want to borrow that, state, uh, uh, that statement um, that says that aging is a disease. You know, and I thought it was a very good question. You know, a lot of people will, will fight that thought, you know, will resent the thought. But uh, if you ask the question like, uh, how many of you would like Alzheimer's? Uh, no one would want it. You know, and these are diseases that come with age. And I'd love to just show you what was God's plan and what is God's intention. If you read in the book of Genesis, you'll understand that it was never God's intention for man to die. There was no uh, expiry date, no time limit given to Adam. Um, the Bible does explain that, that death entered uh, when, uh, Eve and, when Adam and Eve partook of the fruit. Um, but I would like to uh, just elaborate on that thing. You know, uh, a lot of people believe that God is going to restore us to a time um, where, where it was back in the garden. So God will take us back uh, to Adam and people believe that we will go back to that kind of place and time. And I would also like to challenge that, um, you know, challenge that thought. I don't believe that that, that is God's intention. I'm going to show you from scripture and also elaborate more on this aging thing that we were talking about. So. The whole medical world and uh, in science, um, they are trying to get man to a point where man becomes immortal or where man uh, lives uh, for a very, very long time. So trying to slow down aging. And I want to show you from where, from, from a scriptural perspective where it started here. Yeah? Um, God said in Genesis chapter 2, uh, uh, spoke to Adam and he says, of all the trees you may eat, okay, then he said, yeah, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and blessing and calam calamity, you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, now we know that Adam partook of the, of the fruit, um, but what's interesting, it says that in the day you will die now, Adam went on to live for 930 years. So he didn't die that day that he partook of it. So um, uh, later on in the New Testament, it's written that um, a, thousand, a thousand years is as a day, or a day is a thousand years to God, you know. So Adam went on to live for 930 years. So he died uh, within that time span of a thousand, uh, a thousand years, which is a day. Adam could not have been immortal. Even before the time uh, that he partook of the fruit, he wasn't immortal. It was just that there was no death. So I, I want you to think of um, death as, uh, like I said, a disease or like an infection uh, or let's sin and death. I want you to have that picture in your mind and I'm going to elaborate what I mean. Uh, from from this example okay this glass represents Adam okay now I want you to see the water is pure it is 100% pure water all right now this is before Adam partook of the fruit now Romans chapter 5 says um, because of one man uh, sin entered and death the result of sin so because of him now now this is still before it happened. So what happened is, is the Bible says that because of one man, sin entered and death the result of sin. So think of it as an infection. Okay. So that means that Adam could not have been immortal. 
Okay, so it's one thing uh, to have life where there is no death. Okay, so that's what, what Adam had. Adam had life in a place where, where death wasn't known. It's like someone, uh, uh, you know, you get people that are infected with HIV and then uh, there's people that aren't. Now, people that aren't infected with HIV, uh, it doesn't mean that they are immune to HIV. It just means that uh, they don't contain it. You know, they, don't, they haven't been infected. So, Adam was in a place where there was no death and then death entered. Okay, sin and death as a result of sin. So, he couldn't have been immortal. He was just, he just had... Um, a life without expiry. According to scripture, the reason that people die is because of sin. Okay, and um, now if you l go from Genesis and you read through um, and you end up at the Gospels, you'll see the lifespan of man. You know, I mentioned now, now that uh, Adam lived up to 930 years, but how it started to decrease and decrease. So now this is the interesting thing, and I'm going to just read a couple of scriptures um, before I carry on with this elaboration. If you, if you read in uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 20, it says, The law came in to expand and increase the trespass, okay, making it more apparent and exciting opposition. Okay, so now it explains, it says, the law came in to expand the trespass. Okay, so now what happened was, there was sin. Okay, so when they trespassed, sin entered. Okay, now this is going to give you a fresh perspective on what sin is as well. And then it says, the law entered to increase the transgression. So, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it says, now sin is the sting of death okay then it also says that the law is the strength of sin so the law made sin strong so what happened was um, when the law came in in it actually increased the trespass so that people would die quicker so think of that it says sin is the sting of death so if there's a scorpion or there's some kind of uh, thing that has a, has a uh, you know, sting or it's like a snake, it's got a venom, it's got a poison. It says, now sin is the sting. Then it says, the law is the strength of sin. So you get like different kinds of scorpions. You get some more that are more venomous. Okay. So the law made that sting more venomous. Okay, so it increased the transgression, so people would actually end up dying quicker. All right, okay, so death comes in like a disease with, with sin. So 1 Corinthians 15 calls sin the sting of death. And, and uh, Romans chapter 6 says the wages of sin is death. Okay, now I like the way that the, the Amplified puts it. It says the wages that sin pays is death. Now, now Romans 6 gives the, uh, makes an example of sin and says it is a master. All right, so, and it says uh, people can become slaves to sin. And so when they are slaves to sin, the sin as a master pays death. All right, so I want you to see these two, uh, how do we say it? These two examples that the Bible gives us, you know, the sting and, and then the master. So in this scriptures that I, I just put down, I want to read you, uh, read this to you just to uh, elaborate on what my point is. It says, Paul writes here in Romans 7, it says, uh, speaking of the law, it says, the very legal ordinance which was designed and intended to bring life actually proved to mean to me death. For sin seizing the opportunity and getting a hold on me from the commandment. Okay, so remember what I said, sin was like a master. <laughs> All right. And sin took the law. The, the strength of sin was the law. It says, 
um, getting it uh, for sin seizing the opportunity and getting a hold on me from the commandment beguiled and entrapped and cheated me and using it as a weapon it brought death okay so um, so sin was the master now now look remember the Bible says that Jesus who knew no sin became sin that we can now become the righteousness of God we've been speaking about the mortal man about Adam now I want to show you what the scripture says about the immortal man okay Romans 6 verse 9 it says because we know that Christ being once raised from the dead will never die again death no longer has power over him okay so that's what I said earlier it's one thing you know if I take an, another glass of water this is man before uh, you can say the fall it's one thing to be in a place where there is no death you know and that's why we've always thought that Adam was immortal but he wasn't then there's another thing to be Jesus which is completely immune to death because he was resurrected he cannot die again so this is immortality okay all right so if I if I use the same example and I love this demonstration because um, it just it just puts it puts the picture together so well okay now it says um, now Jesus resurrected it says death no longer has power over him so now let's take uh, the sting of death again all right and this is what it means to be completely immune to death immortality okay death cannot touch Jesus all right so this is immortality so uh, that is why Adam cannot be our example Jesus has to be our example so now I started with the um, in the beginning about the medical world you know we're living in a time where people are seeking immortality where the whole medical world is looking to stop aging you know and uh, a lot of people claim that this is possible and I asked the question in a previous video you know what would this do to religion you know and uh, that's why there's parallels there's a, like a parallel in in the world and what should actually be happening uh, in our faith you know so Romans 2 verse 7 it says seek glory honor and immortality it's there now um, now I know so I want to speak about the scriptures like one Timothy chapter 6 that says that he alone is immortal okay now listen to this Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 it says um, this the secret things belong unto God but when they are revealed they belong to us and our children forever second Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 says that Jesus Christ he brought life and immortality to light okay so it, he's revealed it so now you know the saying that says if you can see it you can have it so why why is this important you know for for the whole lot of years we've heard these things like if you die where will you go you know it's been the most um, you've you've probably all heard it in an altar call or a, or a video on YouTube or a evangelical crusade you know and we've always we place our hope in an afterlife but Jesus never said uh, you know I never heard Jesus or either of his disciples ever say if you die where will you go he said uh, I have come that you might have life and have life more abundantly you know that was his invitation his invitation was um, if you 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 weary and burden come to me and get rest you know and this should be our invitation the church has to have um, this kind of invitation the answer that the whole world is seeking looking for life looking for anti-aging um, is has to be found in the church has to be found uh, in Jesus so I want to read um, some scriptures to you and I, and I really pray that that this sinks in because um, 
because in this time this has to be the message all right uh, Romans chapter 6 you should actually read Romans 6 Romans 7 Romans 8 the whole scripture the whole Bible is full of emphasizing this message of life and immortality uh, it says here do not let sin this is Romans 6 verse 12 it says do not let sin rule as king in your mortal body okay so now speaking about a mortal body but don't let sin rule as king in it okay so it is not the the master anymore all right listen to what it says here verse 13 do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members to sin as instruments of wickedness now but offer and yield yourself to god as though you have been raised from the dead to life and your body, bodily members uh, faculties to God presenting them as implements of righteousness okay he says you need to think that you've already been raised from the dead you know like Jesus he cannot die again Paul writes God wants you to think like that God wants you to think that that death has no dominion over you God wants you to think that sin has no dominion over you so this means that we have to take on a new kind of mind okay so where where most of your our identity has always still been found in adam you know in the fall in sin god says he wants you to take on the identity of his son okay and that's why if any man is in christ he's a new creation so when you are in him you take on his identity so you need to think like him you need to think immortality you need to think you're above death you're above sin you're above sickness so we are in christ okay so the answer my answer to the medi the medical world and to everyone seeking immortality is yes it's possible but jesus is the way okay um so it's all over the gospels uh, but john 11 says i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me Although he dies, he shall live. So there's comfort if you die. If people have died, they will live again. Okay? Then it goes on to say, And whoever continues to live and believes in me will never die at all. Jesus said, He who eats uh, my flesh, drinks my blood, they will not see death. You know, it's all over there. So in this time where people are seeking it, yes. It's possible according to the scriptures I want to encourage you if a lot of this might seem controversial especially if you have not heard of it before but there's there's a few videos on YouTube that you can go check out make sure you go uh, click the links there um, and then follow me on Facebook and then you're welcome to ask questions and I can answer it to the, the best of my ability and uh, thank you for watching and I trust you enjoying it